job is not to be concerned with the madness of this age. Our job is to be concerned with offering a cure, a healing. Because that is what Muslims traditionally were. They were people who brought a shifa. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim I would view the Zaytuna approach as being trying to increase knowledge, increase education, Muslim education, Islamic education, spread the idea of knowledge and in the traditional sense untainted by modernist influences which are often uh, hegemonistic and totalitarian. Having uh, real authentic traditional sheikhs who have a continuous transmission from the past and learning from them, that is a most excellent idea because they do have gems to share with us and with the world at large. And to the extent that that can be promoted in this way, that's great. I became a Muslim originally because I wanted to be close to, to God. And I, after deliberation and different things that happened, I realized that uh, I, had to know, I, had to, I couldn't know God by myself. So I have, someone has to take me by my hand and show me the way. So when I came here, what happened is that I realized that this place could be a means to take me by my hand. And the more I was, like I would sit with, with, with Sheikh Salik and, you know, seeing Sheikh Hamza before, you know, it had a big effect on me because it was like I was seeing, I was just seeing the embodiment of, of tradition. It's one thing to read it, but to see it and to interact with it and to learn from it, it you know, it opens your heart. As far as you know, a Muslim is concerned, or whoever is studying Islam, is that. You want to get connected to the Prophet. You want to. You, he's he's the door to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And by going, studying under a teacher who has an an unbroken chain, basically you're getting yourself on that same caravan, where the Prophet is at the head of it. If you look at a doctor. If he doesn't have the sound principles, his understanding that everything he does will harm the patient. Everything is based on right understanding. And that is why shift. If you misunderstand who is behind this universe and the essential unity of the universe itself as an indication of the unity of its creator, then you will begin to do things on this planet that are completely detrimental to yourself and to the planet. Life is sacred not to have sport with. And the things that have been indiscriminately killed are going to have a complaint against the human being on the Day of Judgment. This is what we as Muslims believe. And this should inform our attitude towards the environment. We should be the greatest greenies on earth. We should all have on green beanies. <laughs> Zaytuna as an academy, that portion needs to grow, and it needs to elevate itself uh, to the elite, if you will, of the, of the intellectual, intelligentsia of this country and, and the West. So that it establishes credibility. I mean, we do live in a society of credentials, and you know, they need to establish credibility by becoming top-notch scholars, by producing top-notch scholars, and becoming within the fold of the conditioners, so that the consumers of, of education, of news, you know, of policy will to some degree, hopefully to a large degree, be affected by the positive teachings and positive you know, intellectual traditions of places like Zaytuna. That's one thing that Allah has taught us. Those of us in America here 
to recognize the fact that Allah in his wisdom is challenging us that with institutions like Zaytuna, we'll be able to develop the intellectual wherewithal, not only to converse with fellow Americans, but to be able to go toe to toe with any Muslim anywhere in the world. If we do that, we are successful. The Muslim minority in this country is the most significant Muslim minority in the history of Islam. And we are either going to be recognized by those that come after us, as fulfilling a great historical obligation and opportunity or as betraying a sacred trust. It requires knowledge because Islam is a knowledge-based tradition. So if we're trying to establish something here, it cannot be done in the absence of knowledge. The more we cultivate knowledge, the more unity we will have, and the more that the uh, unfortunate results of all the separatisms and all of the clashes which outsiders can exploit or which we may make very bad by ourselves can be removed. When we have more knowledge, knowledge about ourselves and the other, that ought to make us better and more tolerant. It ought not to make us more sectarian, and more insisting that our own way is right, and more rejecting of the other. Knowledge is bliss. And it's very hard to understand the true meaning of that word until you taste it. But when you taste it, it's very difficult to give it up. Knowledge is in the hearts of human beings and not in the lines of books. So it's about certainly the lines of books, but more importantly, it's about what's in the hearts of human beings. That's what brings forth the real knowledge. And when those hearts come together, they come together in a synergetic fashion and they bring forth community. They bring forth institutions. They bring forth the things that can make this world a better place for all of us. And that's what we pray we can do. We pray that on the basis of knowledge, we can bring forth not only individuals, certainly individuals, but not only individuals, certainly families, but not only families, that we can bring forth a community that will bring the true fruits of Islam to this world.